Good morning! Happy Pajama Day! Well, everybody, do you have your pajamas with you? Do you have your slippers on? Everybody ready to go ahead and have a mellow day? Happy Monday! Okay, folks, so here's what we've got today. Today, what we're going to be doing real quickly is distance formula and midpoint. Then we're going to do a video on equations of circles and then another one to remind you about completing the square, that process of going from standard form back to center form. So for this first one, we've got our two points here on a coordinate plane. We've got point one at negative two comma one and point two at one comma negative three. And what we want to do is we want to find the distance between the two points. Okay, the distance between the two. So what we've got to do is realize that all we're really doing is a fancy version of the Pythagorean theorem, right? A squared plus B squared equals C squared as we recall. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Remember, that itself is just the way we remember the Pythagorean theorem. It's really the leg squared plus the leg squared equals the hypotenuse squared. So if we look at this right here, we can actually count for the two legs. We can see that this value is one, two, three, four units long, and this one is one, two, three units long. And so with that, we can do a Pythagorean theorem using this and just say 3 squared plus 4 squared equals c squared. Now, if we did that, let's go ahead and say that, 3 squared plus 4 squared equals c squared. After we went ahead and followed the order of operations and did 3 squared is 9 and 4 squared is 16 equals c squared, we could go ahead and add them together and get 25 equals c squared. And how do we get c by itself, the hypotenuse by itself? Right, we square root both sides. Now normally I would remind you that we're going to do plus or minus because we're square rooting both sides to get rid of a square, but in this case we know that we're talking about a distance and a distance is always going to be positive. So we're going to say that c or our hypotenuse is five units long and we've solved it right there using the Pythagorean theorem. But what happens when the numbers are uglier, they're decimals, fractions, radicals, anything like that, or much bigger, or really small, and we need more of a formula to do this? Well, what we're going to do is the distance formula. And so what we're going to realize is the distance formula is really nothing more than the leg squared plus the leg squared, and then square rooting both sides to get the hypotenuse by itself, right? The distance being the same as the hypotenuse. So what we're going to realize is that this distance here, this length of three, is along the x-axis. It's parallel to the x-axis, so it probably has something to do with these two values here, that guy and that guy. And I'm wondering, how do we get a three from a negative two and a one? Right, if you're remembering this formula, it's from subtraction. We realize that if we took one minus negative two, we'd get a 3. And how did we get that? That's by taking the second x value minus the first x value. So the way we're going to say that is x sub 2 minus x sub 1. And that's going to give us this distance right there. Now, if that's that distance, what do we still have to do to it? Right, we need to square it. So we're going to square this here. Now, the same thing's going to happen with our y value. We're going to do the same thing, a negative 3 and a 1, how do we get a 4? Well, again, it's subtraction. But this time, if we stay in the same order, it's negative 3 minus the 1. And that's going to give us actually negative 4. But what happens when we square it? Right, it becomes positive. So that order you almost can't really mess up, because if you get the positive or the negative when you square it, you still get a positive value there. So what was that? That was the y values. So really, look, we took the second y value minus the first y value. So we're going to say y2 minus y1. A lot of you are probably remembering this from algebra and earlier math classes. So anyways, if this is the a part and this is the b part, we have to combine them with addition. So we put our plus right there. And then how do we get rid of the square right here? Well, right, we square rooted both sides. So if we actually square root both sides right now, and I'm going to go ahead and do this in green so we can really see what's going on here, 
we now have the distance formula in two dimensions. Yeah, now if you end up taking Algebra 3 at some point, we end up doing distance formula in one dimension, two dimension, and 3D, three dimensions. So feel free to take a look at that class at another time. Anyways, at this point, there's our distance formula, and that found this distance here. Now if we do that, look, we end up getting 1 minus negative 2 is 3, which we're going to square. Negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4, which we're going to square. We're going to add them up, and then we're going to square root it. And so there's our 9, there's our 16, square rooting the 25, and we get the same value of 5. So there you go on the distance formula. Really quickly, I want to do midpoint. Midpoint's trying to find that value right there, the middle of your line. And so one way to think of it is this. We're halfway this way and that way. So we're really right in the middle of these two values. And same goes with this way. We're right in the middle of those two values. Notice that's two units and that's two units as well. That's up two units. Well, the midpoint formula turns out to be nothing more than averaging the x values and averaging the y values. So let me go ahead and show you that really quickly. In terms of the midpoint formula, we end up having, let's write it up here, midpoint, that equals your average of your x values. How do we do average? Right. We add them up and divide by the number of numbers. So that's your x value. We do the same thing with the y value. Go ahead and add them up and divide by the number of numbers, too. Now, again, you can't really mess this up. If you take 1 plus negative 2 is the same as negative 2 plus 1 because of the commutative property, so you can choose either one to be the first point or the second point, but you always have to stick with the x's and the y's. Okay, you can't reverse that around. So, in our midpoint for this one, let's go ahead and find that answer here. We end up with... I think we're going to have a fraction in this one, and that's A-OK. -okay. So we've got negative 2 plus 1 divided by 2, and then 1 plus negative 3 divided by 2. So negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1 over 2. There's our fraction there, negative 1 half. And then 1 plus negative 3 is actually negative 2 over 2. So if we end up writing this one, we reduce our fractions, we still have our negative 1 half here, but here we have a negative 1. Does that look appropriate? Are we over a negative half and down a negative 1? Yep, that's exactly it. So it's really just think of it as the averages of each of them. And folks, I do have your popsicle stick, but I'm saving it till the last video. <sighs> I'll see you then.